So how about today? It's our second conversation with our microsolidarity experiments comparing notes. Um, what are some of the topics or questions or ideas you guys are bringing for the conversation today? Well, I, I think I named one in my check-in, but I'm curious, um, knowing that your past life is a digital nomad, um, and maybe it still is, but you have this added layer of like being in a physical community on this island, like it's small, it's kind of visible. Um, yeah, like what are the lessons you've learned there? And um, that can be, yeah, analogies, lessons, parallels, what's different? Um, and how has it helped you kind of understand like your impact or your, the role you play or um, yeah, how, how, how it all works, <laughs> the mystery of life. That's one thing I wanna put on the table, one small thing. I love that. Brandon, how about yourself? Yeah, I think, um... I've been hearing a lot about like courses. So I'm, I'm curious, I wanna learn more about the course that you're offering and uh, I guess like in some ways, like how can we can help um, just naming that. Uh, but I also like, if you could do, if you could offer any course in the world, like what would it be and why? Uh, like I just, I've heard, I, I actually just got off uh, the call with the, the reinventing work person. And we were talking about um, if you're in an organization, a lot of this future of work stuff seems far away. Uh, how do you convince management? <laughs> and I was like, that's a great question. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, it's such, a, it's such a great question. I love Brandon, last time you asked about the superpower, it was great. <laughs> And yeah, very cool question to, to explore. I think from my side, um, I, I'll be curious about any specific way that I could be helpful to you and your projects. And I know that there's like a few different things that are happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're already generating uh, insights and value in that way just by con talking about those things and, and coming together to one space. But yeah, if there's any kind of specific requests or ideas to just like put on the table, I would be for sure interested in discussing it. Um, I don't know. I'm also curious how are you guys doc going about documenting your work? If, if it's at all something you're considering and um, and if so, how, and if not, why not? And kind of all kind of issues around that. That's something that's recently becoming very clear to me that I, I really like documenting stuff. And there is this funny block that I see, like if I have to write an article, if I call it, it's an article, it just takes me forever to write it. And it feels like, ah, uh, so difficult, I don't know. But if I call it, oh, I'm just documenting the process, like whoosh, one, one day it's done <laughs> and out there. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, just like a funny, funny, funny story. But so that would be something I'll be curious about, about your documenting your projects. Um, so where I should we start? Uh-huh, go for I'm it. Put it on the table. Um, so I, I got to check out a little bit your YouTube channel was Sylvia, is that her name? Yeah. Um, and so it, it's clear that you both are interested in like inner development um, and coaching. And um, I'd be curious. So, so one of the things you've been exploring in our group and one of the kind of places where my creative energy is moving is um, in forming peer-to-peer developmental groups for millennials to um, kind of explore, to, to, to really focus on their inner work. And then 
bring that into like the their outer work um, and their and how they're thinking about their livelihood and um, relationships to money. Um, and yeah, I'm curious how your world of development and coaching is interweaving it all into this micro solidarity experiment. Uh, and if and, and if so, like how, yeah, the, the kind of impact that's had or any learnings there. Okay. Cool. That seems like lots of ground to cover. <laughs> Got to have a, like a yes, very. I'll say, that's fine. Yeah, but uh, so just like for checking the time, what's your kind of? Um, are we um, planning to leave on the hour, or you have some extra time, or how do you think that that's just to kind of scope how much time we have to make the best use out of it? I ideally should leave pretty close to the hour. Okay, cool. I have family waiting on me. Sounds good. Okay. So, okay, maybe let's uh, start with the, the, hmm. Actually, I kind of, I thought, hey, let's start with the first topic, but actually I kind of feel like the mo most maybe interest uh, in starting with the last one you mentioned. So I can maybe just share a tiny bit on that. Um, because I think, and why? I think because this is really what brought me to micro solidarity. So like for, you know, I've been with my partner for, it's a while now, like seven years or something. And at some point, like we've been always interested in, you know, helping each other grow and uh, we're doing some projects together and all this kind of artistic things that we were into at some point. Uh, but then we separated for a while with not because we didn't love each other, but just we needed to do a bit of inner work and it we just was more effective to do it on our own rather than with a partner. And then we came back together, um, which was not something like we, we planned. So we separated like for good with the intention of meeting sometime in the future and to see what happens. And it happened that we kind of stayed together. And then we embark on this journey of, hey, let's, you know, have a location independent life that that was something we want to do. And we were kind of realizing that one thing that we can offer to the world is this relationship related work and personal development. But basically our first project that was, let's say, more businessy was about our about relationships. Um, so we were doing a lot of intentional work within our relationship, but also in the, as individuals. So that were like very intense times of experiments, you know, with diet, with exercise, with routines, with minimalism, just reducing amount of stuff in our life and also communicating with each other, supporting each other. We're in an open relationship. So that was also, and that was kind of the big shift we were doing. So, you know, um, going a bit deeper with communication and holding space for each other and trust and jealousy and all kind of other things, you know, that are connected to loving each other and being in this romantic relationship. Um, and it was amazing to see this kind of process that. I mean, I say that from a retrospective, I didn't really, see, I wasn't seeing that this way back then, but this progress from self to diet, right? Me and my partner, and now moving towards the community and almost it feels like it was a very um, gradual process with adding building blocks in the right order. So for example, when I think about, I mean, of course, like all of, you know, lots of my foundational experience were happening in groups or like, you know, retreats, gatherings, events. So it's connected to other people as well. But I think my, I was not so much formed yet as a person. So, hmm, how to say that? So basically maybe my participation in this group settings was not, optimal i don't know it's if that's a just like now when i see it i see that it could have been so much richer 
but just there were some mindsets that were just not fully formed and I was not fully aware of, I didn't have the tools basically. So even if I had good intentions, they were not always able to be manifested in how I act, you know? So like ego things, you no, know, my idea is the idea we should do this kind of silly things, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it was kind of an interesting process to go from self and then work a lot with that with my partner in this very nurturing safe space where we could share anything with each other. And, you know, we've experienced so many triggers and yeah, there's, I mean, like it's kind of the, the normal thing, like you love your partner, but nobody else can just trigger you so much as, as your partner, just because they know you so well. And there's all those patterns that are happening between you. And we were documenting this process in a way that was our YouTube channel. We were talking about polyamory, open relationships, our lifestyle, and that was just experimenting and trying to figure out how we could, you know, could we do that as a business, which eventually we realized that didn't really work at that time for many reasons, but that's a different conversation. Um, but basically what happened, it was like maybe three years we've been traveling, but we've noticed that we're quite lonely in the sense that we have each other and we have an amazing relationship and we are very much aware that, you know, it's in a way rare how deep and how easy it is and just flows and, you know, we can just, we live together, we have a business together, we spend a lot of time with each other. But it's mostly the two of us. Um, so that was like this natural... It was this insight that was happening throughout the time that eventually really came to the awareness of, yeah, of, of both of us that, hey, we would like to have more of a community. And it's funny because last year I was around this time, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine that like, yeah, like I have maybe, you know, my, my partner, my family, a few friends that I talk with, but, but that's it. And because we are location independent and we move, we don't actually see them very often. So it's mostly me and my partner, which is great, but you know, like it's not all that we would like. We are missing this community part. Um, yeah, and then just micro solidarity kind of happened in the right time. I mean, we already had kind of some pointings towards that direction happening maybe half a year before we came across the actual micro solidarity framework. Um, but it was still very, yeah, I think it was very exposing at that time. Like for example, I've met some, some people from, from Inspiro and I really like, I had this connection. I felt very, you know, like a very good relationship, but it was also talking about this kind of decentralized organizing, being in groups in a different way made me realize that I'm such a noob when it comes to that. I have no experience. I don't feel like I'm like worth, you know, joining like a big, cool, amazing looking uh, group of people doing amazing things. Like, whoa, who am I to even like say that I would like to be in? Like, this is not for me, not because I wouldn't like it to be, but just I'm not ready for it. Um, and that was amazing because that didn't demotivate me, but it actually made me, okay, like, so how can I get to the point where that could be something that works? And to do that, um, well, the only way is to practice, right? So <laughs> that, that really started, um, started with workshops that we were doing. So our business until that point was kind of based on this holy grail of passive income <laughs> that, you know, we were like, oh yeah, this is so great. Sounds so good. Let's, let's have passive income and, you know, figure out how to do it. Um, but then we kind of realized that, you know, it was not really working for us the way how we were going about it. And then um, a friend we've met introduced us to this idea of online facilitated workshops. And that was a game changer completely for everything professionally and personally because that was the time when we realized hey we can do workshops online which was something that we didn't even consider before as an option because you know like we thought that what you can do is like have a webinar when there's one presenter and you know you don't really need to be there but we've seen that there are different ways to do it and those guys are doing it and they're good at it and we've been both me and my partner designing workshops presentially for years before and we missed it, you know, we missed the physical events, but we just 
accepted that we cannot run physical events because we don't have enough audience. And if we just keep moving, nobody will show up, you know, like we tried, but just didn't work. Um, and the online aspect changed everything. And I think this was kind of coming, you know, in parallel. So we started creating those cohorts um, and groups that were basically focused on the personal development tools that we were creating and processes. And that was like the first experience of these cohorts, right? So how can we transform our courses and how can we make courses as these long-term experiences that we do together with a group of people rather than passive income stuff that we just put on sale and people will be will keep buying it forever and we don't need to do anything apart for maintenance. And the funny part was that we found it just so much more rewarding. <laughs> So like, wow, I just love working with people. Why not do that? If, and we're good at it. You know, it's something that it seems like people are attracted to us as, I don't know, as presence. So, and we both feel, my partner and I, that we have something to offer. So it was just a perfect match. Plus it was like a learning experience towards uh, becoming more of a community oriented person, right? So... And actually, the micro solidarity as the, the actual website is a link that was shared from one of our students. So, you know, he, he's seen what we're doing, he was going through the course, and he said, Oh, wow, like you guys need to check this out. Like that would really fit with one of the lessons. And, you know, we had like lots of resources, and we we're always asking, Hey, if there's something uh, you feel is missing or could add value to the course, just share it with us, you know, we'll, we'll add it. Um, so that's how we found micro solidarity. So it was interesting, like this step, 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 steps. Um, yeah. And from there, it's basically what we talked, kind of, I shared that story, you know, what happened, um, after we found it in the, in the previous call with Brandon, but that's kind of, so basically, I guess the kind of the key takeaway for, or at least how it happened for me, I don't know if this is some like replicable, structure that makes sense as a framework but it made sense for me to kind of start with myself be comfortable with myself and being the person who i am to a certain extent of course there's lots of tensions and things i need to figure out but at least have this foundational first layer then be so it's enough that i can work with my partner and we did a lot of deeper work that was super tiring and exhausting and emotionally you know charged but great in the same time and then the next step was the community so it was like almost okay we we got this one let's move a level higher okay we got this one now what if there's 10 of us not just the two of us how can we do that uh and of course every person you add to a group it's just so much more complexity so just so many new layers are you know brought up yeah, so now it feels like this next level is, is the small community, like groups that are not that big and maybe eventually going somewhere bigger. Uh, but let's see, for now, like I like to do just this gradually, you know, and not, not jump, jump too, too far because it just seems like it doesn't work. So like scale, but at the right pace for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I hope that the answer to your question is a very long-winded answer. <laughs> hmm. No, that was great. And I think you kind of fit in, you kind of snuck in the question of what are, what, what course, what is your course? Or what, uh, what, are, what are the courses that you're designing online? Maybe not fully, but I felt yeah. like I got, I got a sense of it. Yeah. Yeah, that was like mostly, um, yeah, it's part, things now I'm kind of understanding the words better, but I think, you know, to kind of, I mean, in ideal world, like something that Brandon asked, like what would be the, the perfect course I would like to offer to the world would be to basically have some kind of long-term, like a, I don't know, half year, maybe even a year long thing that happens partially on a sailboat. That's like perfect, you know? That's a big passion of mine that I haven't really been exercising much in the last few years because I was focusing on building my financial, you know, stability and building the business, which is still ongoing, 
Um, but that's kind of, I feel it's the next step, something I would really like to do. Um, but so that would be like this perfect ideal course I would like to offer because it, it gives you this combination of being offline, but completely plus this very present situation when you're just, you know, like it's higher risk situation. Therefore you are very mindful of everything you do and you're very present. Plus it forces you to cooperate because you're, life sort of depends on it you know so it has this very interesting context but i think you can take it further further than just sailing together which is great and i love it but i think there's an additional layer that could be added and i don't think it would be like just one group of people sailing together for half a year but more of a um, have like three sailing trips throughout the year when you come for a week together and you know it just gives you this reboot but it's it's like often enough that you don't forget the past experience so it kind of becomes the part of your life maybe this is the biggest finding from our courses that it's about the rhythm that it's not a peak experience like a gathering and it's amazing and i love everyone and then life happens and you kind of drop to usually to your past self often but when it's something that happens regularly like weekly bi-weekly monthly it's becoming a part of your life um, mm -hmm. this is what we try to do with our courses so our new course is one year long with a bi-weekly meeting so it's it's just essentially becomes a part of your your life the, co the other courses we we're doing were three months long so it's also very you know it's long but that's by design, it's deliberate. It doesn't take much time, but it's, it lasts for long because we want the results to last for longer. We want it to be a part of your life, not just a, a peak experience that then you don't really integrate that much. We just found it much more valuable and, and it works. Like it's just, just magical to see what happens to people when they undergo this transformation over a long period of time. Plus it's enough for them to see ups and downs. I think that's, that's like another big takeaway because you know, we think, hey, there's this new tool system, whatever you're trying to learn, it's gonna be great. I love it, you learn it, you adapt it to your life, but then, but then life happens, there's problems, confusion, all of that. And I think that's a big part of what we're trying to do with our courses is to go through this process together. So you're not left alone to deal with the laws and, figure it out yourself, but actually you have a group of people to come back to and brainstorm this together. And at the end, you're, you come up with a new tool you've mastered. Like, of course, you can keep mastering it for life, but at least you know you've applied it for a few months. It's different experience than, you know, applying something for a week or two weeks. So yeah, that's kind of what, what we're trying to do with the work. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love, I just want to jump in and talk about something Stephanie and I tried to do, uh, with a few others, uh, called a dojo. And in some ways, like this reminds me of a, a dojo space, like the, the spaced repetition, you know, they talk about like, if you want to memorize something, spaced repetition is the best way to you know, memorize it, whether it's a poem or a song or something, you know, just that space to integrate is critical. Um, and like, I, I was picking up on, you know, a little bit of the, like in, in micro solidarity, one of my favorite phrases that I think Rich uses is like the fractals of belonging, um, kind of exploring those membranes around us, those spheres, the widening spheres. And one thing that I've kind of just through hearing you talk is realize like a dojo is a space for practice and like gives you the tools to integrate but it you basically come and use what you've learned in the next session so if you ever think of like a karate or kung fu like they teach you for you know maybe an hour or two hours because that's all you can take unless you're a shaolin monk which is in it's all day but that's a different story um you know, then you come back like a, a, a week later and you're like, did you learn what you 
learned last time and like that that friction um gives you that learning edge and like that's yeah. what's important so like I'm, I'm really happy to hear like how you've set it up because i think it'll be like very successful and i think i have to sign up for the course you're more than welcome we still have a few spots and you're definitely a kind of person you would like to work with um but wow, I, I love, it's, it's amazing, like this power of relational thinking. I was just like yesterday kind of trying to think through this, this idea of rhythms and relational growth and just hearing the, the spaced repetitions like, oh yeah, that's the, like, that's the missing link. Like, yes, of course, like it works in learning. There's science that already proves that, yes, this is what you need, right? So it's kind of the, the similar idea. And and yeah, what you mentioned about the dojo, dojo kind of setup where like, yeah, you, you learn just the, the, the minimum, but then you need to apply it and practice for this time in your own, right? Because essentially it's you who is learning. And then you come back for reviewing it together and seeing, okay, so what were the things you internalized? What were the things that you're still doing wrong? What can we correct? Okay, cool. What's the next step based on where you are? So yeah, I, I love this love this idea um so yeah thanks for adding vocabulary <laughs> it's very very helpful it also makes me think of like adaptive cycles i don't know if you're familiar but like um there's four what are the four quadrants like um essentially it's like cycles of birth and death and rebirth and the different stages between that which are like stabilization and decomposition um I'm totally butchering the language around it, but um, I I often think about like uh, scales of adaptive cycles. Like in, we have we have the individual like cycles of birth and death happening. That's happening in between relationships. It's happening in a group, and then like the the, the longer learning journey, um, or even if you it, like. And then to me, it, it makes to, it's it's the natural world. It's like your muscles get stronger by breaking and rebuilding and the cycles of the moon and um yeah it's the kind of one shot like wowing show is more of like the entertainment model like you might it's like the dopamine rush like you might think it's it works at the time so you'll put your money towards it but um which is kind of what our culture like wants from us but um, but yeah, what actually works is is quite different. Um, yeah. So where are we in this? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's the I guess the one part was kind of um, my, the documenting part. My curiosity if there's something I can help you guys with and the physical aspect of community. Mm. I'll let you choose which one you, you want to dive next. Well, we can talk about the documenting first um, and then give you back the floor for the physical, um, which, yeah, so, so, so documenting, it's something that we've been talking about ever since we came together as a group um, in like May, June. Um, and I totally relate to what you were saying about like the article, the pressure of the article. Like I, I have all of these article ideas and like notes and drafts, but they're like in the hidden in the like cobweb cracks of my computer and notebooks. Cause I'm like, they're not ready to be read or like, no, like that's, I don't want anyone to like judge this as like a fully fleshed idea. Um, but Recently, we've so so we um we were Carol and I actually are and with along with another uh, member and collaborator Meg, um, the three of us are launching like a writing dojo space, um, and we're actually meeting for the first time um, on Thursday of next week, if you want to join. Um, but the the intention is to create a um, synchronous space to support like whatever is trying to come out, like to the kind of early, the early articulations of creative energy that are in us, like get it on paper. 
Um, and so maybe that, and, and so for some of us, that might mean starting to write and document what's happening around us. Um, since I feel like I kind of have this like backlog of creative energy that was like blocked over this, the past few months about documenting and working out loud. And um, so a lot of that I hope will come out in that space. But the idea, it's, it's a space that'll, it's modeled after um, this writing method that I learned in, in a retreat called the gateless method. Um, and it's all about creating um, like a, it's, it goes against kind of what we think of as a creative process, like in school, like it's all about critique and um, criticism and it's the, it's really like opposite and it's creating this um, like appreciative effect that actually it became, becomes like an echo chamber of what's resonating with others that you're writing. And then it, it feeds back into you and allows you to just like fully release whatever is trying to come out. Um, so that's kind of the, the spirit behind the space that we're creating, but it's the intention is to is a, a large part of the intention is to help each other um, document and start sharing more um, and finding the connections. And we're also um, I think Brandon mentioned this last time, but the present of work collective is <clears throat> just launched our website and we hope to kind of use that also as a portal to, to weave the documentation and start sharing more. Um, yeah, anything you would add, Brandon? Yeah, I'm, I'm like zooming in to this. I, I love that you named working out loud. I'd, I'd almost offer you to, to define it, but maybe it's self explanatory um, live documentation. Maybe that's all I'll say. <laughs> Um, it's like what we're doing right now, like we're doing the work, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she, she's, she's, she's copying it. He's got a copy, yep. Um, in, in some ways, there's, there's a, I have an anxiety around editing and preparing and making stuff packaged um, because then it takes away some of the essence, some of the, the, you know, interrelationships that we're developing, like the bouncing of ideas. Like if I'm only cutting out my section of this for a podcast, then it's, you're losing the context. Uh, you're losing, you know, the, the light that's coming in your windows and that it's daytime for all of us. And, you know, like that's a different energy, you know, like we're operating on different parts of the, the cycle of um, the planet. Um, and then also like I'm, I'm I'm reminded of some of the scribing work, like people who do harvesting. Um, like I've met people in the art of hosting community who will, they're kind of like with your notebooks, they'll just do it over a big canvas. And there are people who are graphic facilitators, et cetera. And then there's something that I learned recently from uh, the ULAP folks that there's something called future scribing or generative scribing. And you're focused on emotional content that comes up feelings and emotions. And like, to me, like all of these are forms of documentation. I think in some ways, like we've been experience, we've been experimenting with like digital documentation, like through Gitbook and as of yesterday, Notion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm looking at Stephanie. Um, and I, so I'm, I'm, I've, I've noticed that there's like a, a Cambrian explosion of these note taking tools uh, I know Rome Research and, and the Obsidian are like two that I've really heard of, but I don't know, like that's that's kind of where the threads started to come together. And I, I wanted to shout out, I have a friend who does like listening for other people as a form of documentation. It's like she writes mm -hmm. poems uh, at the Good Listening Project. A shout out to Jenny. Yeah, something that you just reminded me of, Brandon, is like, I set like developmental writing was the term that came up in like the writing dojo space the other day like um there's I think the pressure of the article is 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 um coming from like writing as a form of um the word that came to me was like colonization like claiming space or like an idea or like writing a book as a manifesto like we've solved this and let's spread this knowledge um but what i yeah how we see working out loud or like documenting process is is really just um 
a form, an exercise, like a developmental exercise, like um, asking a, a space to like ask questions and invite others into the the complexity and uncertainty of like what's going on around us. And like, it's just like a sense making tool. Um, and yeah, like I think I always, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Peter Lindbergh who uh, in the STOA, but I like his, I read some of his um, Substack and I, I feel like he does a good job of modeling developmental writing. Like he's often, um, yeah, Jesus, he's bringing us along on his developmental journey, no matter how like convoluted or whatever it is, like he's not trying to make sense. Um, and um, yeah, that's inspiring, inspiring to, to me at least. I'm trying to become more skeptical or I am more skeptical of, of writing that, you know, has a beginning, middle and end and makes too much sense because that's a fallacy. <laughs> I feel you. I was just reading this. Uh, I read this quote yesterday um, that like the, this something, I mean, I'm butchering the words, but something along the lines that the having answers is the like the source of people's stupidity. And instead, we should have questions for everything. Um, and I really resonate with what you're saying, like this, um, this idea of not like shipping something that like this is it like that's the solution but more showing the messiness of it and of messiness of the process of figuring something out based around an important question that you're feel drawn to exploring um yeah this is something i also like came across recently as treating goals as hypothesis you know it's not like i want to do this but if I do this, like, I don't know, every day I will, whatever, do a yoga for an hour, what's gonna happen if I do this for 200 days? Let's see. And can I manage if I don't? Like, but it reduces the pressure so much and it's more real in a way, like it's not depicting like this Instagram-y perfect life, you know, where, uh, yeah, you just see like this, this perfect version of reality that's just some kind of image, but it's actually, yeah, the real process is shitty. It's messy, it's complicated and things don't really work. <laughs> and you make them work with time and persistence and self-compassion, I guess, as well. Um, yeah, I really like this, this idea. And yeah, like to, to come back to, to yeah, note taking as well. Like I see that now I'm, I've started putting more effort into taking better notes and yeah, like removing this pressure of doing this for publishing amazing articles, but just to document stuff and then be able to, to share it with people, this changes everything. And it feels much more immediate and it feels much more useful. Like, hey, just this is where I'm at at the moment. Um, it feels real also for me, you know, like it's honest. It's not, I'm not, of course, I can share my experience from this retrospective point, right? Which is useful, maybe. But, but yeah, it may be make you seem like this person that has it all figured out, which is not true at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if we want to move into the... Um island lessons from the island or the physical world and the digital world okay uh, how does that sound or sounds good pulling us too quickly away from the writing no it oh. sounds sounds like we're, we're landing the plane <laughs> <laughs> on the island on oh, the island <laughs> <laughs> it's great okay so it's interesting that you're mentioning this specific subject yesterday i had a conversation uh in which this kind of came up like you know you guys are so lucky to have the presential community you can hug each other come together do things together and it's kind of interesting because part like yes it's great you know it's amazing but also the grass is always greener on the other side so it's not like it's only roses and it's perfect 
and actually i think the the like the takeaway for me at least is that i love the combination of both so to have my physical community where we are living close to each other and we meet regularly and you know you just bump into each other and you spend time together in a physical space but also i love the worldwide uh, intercultural groups of people that are just doing their own things in the other parts of the world and i might never see them in person or i might um i think it's like it's i i really love the combination of the two i think they have a lot to learn from each other and feeling having both right now which is funny because last year i had neither and in not that long of a period of time i have both and that's during pandemic <laughs> so it's like wow very unusual experience maybe um but yeah so yeah it's kind of interesting to be in the middle of both because for example there's some similarities that come up like from a very technical bits like i don't know rich was mentioning the other day this thing that all communities or groups have this desire to like make a directory of skills you know who has what to offer or like list the knowledge and articles we're reading but then it never really works or it very rarely actually works and it's funny because like recently my, like this idea kind of came up in in our our presential community and then you know it's like yeah i i'm so familiar with this process like yeah let's have a google sheets and put things we read and just like no it doesn't really work <laughs> so i think in in a way the the both of them help like for me they they help each other with certain insights i notice certain patterns that are repeating in both and also i don't know like being a part of inspiral i see the use of digital tools and some of them i can implement to my local context because yeah we don't really have a good digital communication but we also don't need it right because we just meet each other regularly so it's different exactly like today we had a friend just coming over because you know she was around like this this is possible here um but you know like our communication is a mess it's like a whatsapp group and it's just you know it's not the most optimal form of communication when you start working on projects and scaling up and people work on different kind of things but for now it works so yeah it's like i i can feel there's some some lessons for adapting some of the digital tools for local context and i think there is a big benefit and possibility to improve for us here further but also yeah like it's maybe not needed at the moment so it's something to come later and i don't know like the other side maybe is the i'm thinking what is from the like physical communities that i can bring to the digital ones maybe um hmm and yeah it's kind of interesting because the bottom line really like it doesn't matter kind of if it's digital or physical of course it's different it's completely different experience if we would be now having a conversation in a you know in in your place stephanie it would be a different conversation or different type of interaction that we're having on zoom of course it's it's a different thing but i think they both have a place to exist and they're both valuable and i'm not sure if i would be happy just to let go completely of the digital ones and like just be in my community it seems appealing maybe because you know no need to spend time on zoom and all the kind of digital things and you just see the progress maybe more realistically but then also like we show up to the digital calls as maybe our best selves and because it's just this limited time we're just you know we're going to put our best performance not performance in a bad way but you know like okay let's do this put the energy there but sometimes when you like live together it's different you know you see the shit that you wouldn't see through zoom <laughs> so there is like those 
proximity triggers that you start noticing and you know you like someone and maybe you would love them on zoom in by weekly calls but when you start living as a neighbor they're actually freaking annoying you know and of course they're a good friend but also they have this triggery bit so i think it's just very different experience but i think that both of them are important like i think if one of them would be missing i wouldn't feel complete so and I feel lucky in that sense, no, because I, I have the physical community right now, which makes a big difference. And it's new for me. I didn't have it for four or five years. So it's something really new in, in my life and it comes at the right time. Now I can kind of use it in a, you know, not abuse it, but use it for good and help contribute, create space. And it has the same problems, you know, like lack of communication, difficulties in communications, somebody needs to call stuff to exist. And if nobody does, it just stays there. People have different opinions about going stuff. So all those things exist in both, I think, just different, different angles. But I'm also aware we're coming kind of at the full hour and you, you have physical places to be, Stephanie. <laughs> Time to be with your physical community. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, that's really cool. Like one, you wouldn't feel complete without both, or something you said, like they, the, the two together make you feel complete. And I just think it's it's so cool. It goes back to rhythms as well. Like we can have different rhythms with with people in the, in the digital world. Um, uh, and that might sustain, yeah, there, maybe there's like a, if, if yeah, maybe the rhythms can sustain themselves in different like time is different because it's not like you're you're only talking to someone twice a year but you live in the same space maybe that's carrying like an assumption that you don't really care about them or something um and maybe that's different in the digital world i don't know stop asking more questions um <laughs> well i'd love to continue this conversation um it may be in january after i come back from my my, my break um but I guys, I really enjoy talking with you and I still feel like I really want to hear much, much more about your, your projects. Like I'm starting to kind of get the understanding of the different, different bits and pieces. Um, but it sounds great. And the, the writing dojo also, you know, my, something we're also thinking in some way, like my partner is a writer, that's kind of her. So she is the, she's the one doing the lifting for the articles that I can't handle the pressure, you know? So it's a good team, uh, but I'll point her towards, towards that. Um, yeah, just really enjoy our conversation, guys. Uh, and I feel some deep love here and connection and I would like to continue exploring um, and sharing notes and learn more about you and your work and the, the kind of messiness of the process and enjoy the mess together. Because <laughs> it's fun, no? It's a great, great kind of activity. 100%. I, uh, I would love to share some stuff that's on, you know, our, our plates. <laughs> and we'll take, we can take some stuff from you and we'll have like a potluck. So the, the messy potluck. I love that. Oh, that was great. <laughs> okay. So I guess we should probably stop here, right? And see you guys in the, in the next next chapter. <laughs> yeah. 2021. To. Yeah. Big, <laughs> wow. big changes, new beginnings. Yeah. May okay. it be more amazing than 2020. Yeah. <laughs> we can make it make it so. It's, you know, okay. lots of things are with that, within our power. Yeah. Okay. Uh, huh. Have a wonderful day. You too. Yes. See you later. Later. Be well. Be well. Bye.